So you've built your Next.js app, but your dynamic page is performing slowly or creating a large load on your server. It happens, don't fear, there is an easy solution. Caching the page. No, you don't need any fancy services like Memcache or Redis. You can just make a very few small tweaks to your Next.js app and Next.js will do all the magic for you. And you're thinking, I've got dynamic data, it's not static. That is fine, don't worry. Next.js have come up with incremental static regeneration, aka ISR. Let's take a look at our link free app. On the homepage, it has some statistics and these statistics do change in real time. But if they were cached for 10 minutes, it wouldn't be bad. Actually, it'd be really good because the page load time would improve massively. So how can I show you how to do this really quickly? Well, if we go to our code, and this is the page, we're using get server side props to get those statistics and hydrate and send it to the React component. But what we can do is let's put a console log and let me show you that this is getting called every time. So if I do console log and we say, if I just write here and I hit save and I'll run the app, I'm going to run it in production mode because in dev mode, the cache isn't used. So just to prove it to you, we're going to run npm build and we're going to do npm start. So it's going to build our application and then it's going to start it in production mode. And then I want to show you that in the console, we will see that console log happen all the time. Now it's running. Let me clear the terminal so we can see. So if I refresh this, we can see it says here. So it's hit get server side props. So if I refresh again immediately here, refresh, 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 go to the terminal, we see lots of them. So there's no cache being used here. And yes, these will be more accurate, these numbers, but they don't have to be so accurate. So what we can do next is we could actually change this to get static props. And then the other thing we do is we need to return the, the cache timeout here. And you can see GitHub Copilot is already suggesting revalidate 60 seconds. I would make it you know, times 10 to make it 10 minutes, but let's do 60 seconds for this video. So let's hear save. And those are all the changes we need. And with these changes, this enables us to use the static generation on a per page basis without needing to rebuild the entire site, which is super awesome. But let me prove it to you just in case you don't believe me. So I'm going to clear the terminal. I'm going to stop the terminal. I'm going to rebuild it and start again. And then I'm going to clear the terminal as well. And there'll be no visual changes on the page apart from the numbers won't change in that 60 seconds. And we shouldn't see a console log as well within those 60 seconds. So now it's running. Let's clear it. Let's run the page. OK, so we have nothing on the page at the moment because it's using the cache. I want to refresh it a few more times. Refresh, refresh, refresh. And in the terminal, there is nothing. Let me just make a few spaces to prove it to you. Refresh, refresh. Absolutely nothing. And if we wait, maybe not 60 seconds now, maybe it's about 30 or 40 seconds remaining. When we do a refresh, we will see the console log. And if we refresh further, there'll be no more console logs within that 60 seconds from that time it rebuilt that page, which is so awesome. Choosing the time is important because if it's too long, then data could get out of date. And if it's too short, you're not benefiting from the performance of using the cached version. So finding a balance is important and you could tweak this. You could have it different for each pages because some pages you might want it less and some pages you might want it more. So is that more than 60 seconds yet? Let's find out. Refresh. Okay, it hasn't been 60 seconds yet. And each time you refresh and the cache is hit, it doesn't reset that 60 seconds. The 60 seconds was from the last time the page was built or the cache was uh, invalidated. There we go. So you can see it says here and, it, and it's uh, happened. So it that time didn't use the cache, it actually recreated the page. If I hit refresh a few more times, you can see there's no more console logs and they won't appear, like I said, for the 60 seconds until the next time the cache is invalidated. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you apply this to your apps as well. It's a super great way to improve performance. I learned this from the Eddie Hub community. The members there are amazing. They're continually making improvements to the link free project I'm learning about React and Next as we go along. So if you do want to learn faster, network and geek out with amazing people, come and join us in the Eddie Hub community. Link in the description below.